Hey, how's it going? I just wanted to take a quick moment to show you a common diagnostic measurement for automatic transmissions and for some manual transmissions. And what I have set up is I have a dial indicator set up to measure input shaft end play. So I have my input shaft right here. This is the stator shaft that's fixed on the end of the transmission pump. So what I'm gonna be measuring is the amount of movement inwards and outwards that this shaft and this drum assembly has in this particular transmission. Now the vehicle I'm working on is a 2022 Ram 3500 chassis cab and this is an ASIN uh, ASRC uh, six speed automatic transmission. Now this process is not just specialized for this particular transmission or this particular vehicle. Uh, you can use this process on uh, any number of vehicles but what i have set up is i have a t-handle set up on the end of the input shaft that is uh, uh, locked in with a little grub screw uh, one of the key notes with that when you do install these is you want everything on this dial indicator to be as stable as possible you want no free play in its mounting surface or where the dial indicator is located you get a more accurate reading that way but you also don't want to damage the end of your input shaft. Now this particular vehicle is getting a new input shaft. It's part of a recall that's out for these, uh, these trucks. Uh, and so I'm doing my preliminary check to make sure that my input is, uh, my input clearance is within spec as well as when I put the new input shaft in that I am uh, matching what the vehicle uh, had going, uh, coming out. So the factory specification for this particular vehicle is 19 to 30 thousandths of an inch. Now my dial of my dial indicator right here, every single one of those notches is a thousandths of an inch. So what I'm going to do is I have this uh, input shaft pulled out with my T-handle and I have my dial zeroed and then I'm gonna push it in. And what I'm, what I'm doing is as I'm pushing this in like so, the end of the indicator that's on a nice machined surface of the transmission case allows for the dial to be pushed in. So I can see right now with this pushed in, I'm right at 18 thousandths of an inch. I'll double check it. So I'm at zero. And again, about 18 thousandths of an inch. Now that's a little bit tighter than spec. However, I'm not gonna worry about that. That one thousandths of an inch isn't gonna cause any issues with this transmission, as well as I'm replacing the input shaft. So that all might be changing here in a second anyways. Um, but for the most part, this process is pretty simple. Um, you can mount these dial indicators in a multitude of different ways. This is the way that I found though that actually works uh, pretty well and is nice and sturdy. Um, again, we don't have any free play or anything that's going along with it. Uh, as well as anywhere that the pointer is going to go, you, you can have it anywhere on the pump. I try to not have it on like the cast iron surfaces, uh, but on a nice machine surface. So with the uh, bell housing adapter removed from this transmission, uh, we get a nice little area for us to be able to measure. So I've done my repair of the input shaft for this particular transmission. I'm going to go back through and re-double check that I have input play, which I am within specification. I'm right at now 19 thousandths, where I was at 18 thousandths. I reused the same shim. So had it not been within spec, uh, you change out a shim that goes on the bearing on the input drum against the pump assembly so like i have three different thickness uh bearing shims that would go in this and effectively these are just outer races that just are different thicknesses like that's the thickest one and that's the thinnest one so they vary in thickness uh to get you within the specification that you need uh the fail point on this particular transmission was this snap ring uh came out of the drum and that ended up burning up this clutch uh causing it to have no forward gears Again, this is part of the recall. Uh, so now that I have uh, my input shaft clearance double checked and uh, where I need to be, I can then reinstall this. I gotta put the bell housing back on, the torque converter back in, and I can reinstall it into the truck. But now I've verified that we're, we're at the same place that we weren't started. Uh, I do like to use the, if there's no damage to it, that is, I do like to use the shim that it came with first because it's a good starting point. Uh, we're back within specification on where we want to be. I'm on the tighter side of the specification. Uh, things typically always get looser, but again, you want to try to aim for somewhere in the middle there and you're just fine. So I hope you found this uh, video entertaining and helpful, and I really appreciate you watching.